What are my top three dual sport motorcycles for new riders? Well, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it on the Rant and Ride. Look what happened. I woke up in a big old pound of money. Hey, all you KTM guys, come on. I'm Team Warren. Don't think I'm coming down on the street. I, on the other hand, and you on the other hand, and a lot of people on the other hand. So why don't we have a 450? a lot of eyes. But here's my thinking. Hey guys, Joe here, 690V, 690 Garage, 690ADV.com. Again, the 690 Enduro. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully good. Hopefully everybody has had a good week. Out for a little rant, out for a little ride. Today, my top three dual sport motorcycles for new riders. And these are my top three. They may not be yours, but they're mine. And I think I picked three fantastic motorcycles for new riders or new riders that are looking to getting into dual sport and they don't want to break the bank. They don't want to spend 10, 12, 14 thousand dollars for a dual sport motorcycle. And I don't blame them because you know what? May not be for them. Heck, it may change their life. But anyway, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Get on board, be part of the crew, get in there, make comments. Let everybody know your knowledge, even if you're an experienced rider or unexperienced rider. Ask the questions, because we do have experienced uh, subscribers that get on, and uh, they leave really, really good information. And that's really what it's all about, is dropping good information about what we're trying to get across to our community of the dual sport world, and that's really what this is all about. It's all about dual sporting. Now, we could talk about any motorcycle that you like, but my channel, or our channel, is a dual sport channel. It's about getting out, getting lost, camping, and having a good time. So, with that being said, if you haven't subscribed, please give us a subscription, give us a thumbs up, and if you like what you hear, let us know about it. Put it in the comment sections. Anyway, my top three dual sport motorcycles for new riders. Number three. Number three, guys. That's going to be Kawasaki. The KLX 250S. The Kawasaki KLX 250S, it kind of doesn't get a whole lot of, you know, talk as far as a dual sport adventure bike. You know, because it's really not an adventure bike, but it is a dual sport bike, and it is fun to ride. My buddy in Florida has one, and it's kind of corked up. It's not super, super fast. It's not going to win any races or anything like that, but it sure is fun to ride. And it's great on light trails and stuff like that. And it's a perfect commuter bike. It's a great, great commuter bike. It is. All these bikes are going to be right at about a two-gallon gas tank, maybe just a hair over. But it's got a 21 front. It's got an 18-inch rear tire which is nice, so that gives it good ground clearance. That ground clearance on there is gonna be right at 11 inches, which is really good if you're trying to go over, you know, big bumps or small logs or, or rocks or any of that type of stuff, if you do get into going off-road. Um, it doesn't have a ton of horsepower. It is carburetor driven. That's the only downside to that bike, but it is a six speed. And with it being a six speed, that means it's got that cruising gear, which is kind of cool if you are going to get on the road and ride a little bit. So it's, it's, it's a good little bike and it's fun. And it's not going to break the bank guys. MSRP up on screen. Uh, it's just not that expensive. So you can usually pick them up, use the new one, that new digital camo. It's pretty cool, man. I like it. I think it's really neat. It's not super, super powerful. So like I said, this is new rider stuff, but also experienced riders own them too because they're just fun to ride. It's a great little pony to put in your stable. It's just really, really fun. But they're not super powerful. Um, but, you, you know, anybody can get on these bikes and ride. That's the cool thing because they're not super, super intense. It's not like the 690 Enduro. This is not a new rider bike. It's just, I've said it, you know, in many of my rant and rides, that the 690, 701, 500 EXC, stuff like that, these Enduro bikes, they just, they're pumped full of horsepower and they're just, they're just too much for your new riders, you know. But eventually, when you get in, you ride, get your time in the seat, eventually, you may want one. You may never want one. So, uh, as far as comfortable on the 250S, uh, it's not awful. It's not great either. Uh, but then remember, you can always go and you can make modifications and turn that bike into a much, much, much more comfortable motorcycle. Um, but 
Uh, we're talking bikes straight up, right out of the gate, coming from the manufacturer. We're not doing too many mods to it. We're just saying, hey, if I got this bike and there's not a lot going on, not too much in it, can this bike work for me? Heck yeah, it can work for you. It's a great bike. Kawasaki KLX 250S is really a fantastic little bike. It's not a powerhouse, but it is a really, really fun bike, and it's perfect for the new rider. The downside is the seat height is a little high on that bike. It's right at 34 inches. So if you're a short rider, you may want to get a lowering link or get some bones or what they like to call them and drop that baby down just a little bit. That way you can get your feet planted so you feel more secure, but you can do it. That's the nice thing about that bike. You can do it. It's like I said, right at 34 inches. It may be a hair more. I'm going to have some specifications on screen, but for a bike that if you were just starting out or if you've just been in it a little bit, it's a perfect bike and it doesn't break the bank. Number two. Number two is going to basically take two spots for what it is. And I'm sure everybody kind of knows what I think it is, but for me, it's the CRF 250L or your rally. But I'm just going to talk about the L because the L is what I have and it's what I have the most knowledge on because I've had plenty of seat time in that bike. It's not too powerful. Now mine's been modded out so it's got extra this and extra that. It's got you know a performance muffler. It's got the fuel mapping upgrade yada yada yada. We're not talking about that but I'm just telling you. But out of the gate it's really a great bike to start out on. It's not super, super powerful. It's a little heavy on the 250 side at 317 pounds and the rally's at like 340 some odd pounds, but it's a six speed. It is fuel injected, so it's not carburetor, so you don't have to make adjustments if you're up in altitude, which is really pretty cool. It's got the lowest of the clearance. It's at right at 10 inches of ground clearance, uh, but it is a 2118 tire, so that makes it really good for if you're off-road and doing stuff and you're learning how to go over big rocks or if you're learning to go over uh, small, you know, trees that are down, you know, something that's like three inches or four inches around or something like that. Um, it's still got that two some odd gallon gas tank on it, so it didn't have much, but all these bikes get really great gas mods. They're all in the 70 mile per gallon range, which is awesome. So if you're commuting or just riding around, guess what? You could fill that bad boy up, man. I mean, think about it. You could go like roughly 170 miles on a tank. It's pretty good, man. That's really, really nice. Um, the seat height, not horrible. Right at 34 inches. Uh, like I said, 317 pounds, 2118 tire. Uh, and it's, it's, the seat from factory is not horrible. It is a decent seat. Uh, I have a seat concept. I'm not going to lie to you. It's butter. It is nice. It, it's just super, super comfortable. I got a seat concept on the KTM down here, and I just love them. And I, I can't give enough about the seat concepts because of how comfortable they are. Um, but like I said, out of the gate, and they're not too expensive either. All these bikes are going to be sitting in that $5,000 range. And in use, man, if you shop good enough, you could probably pick these bikes up for, man, 2000 2500 sometimes three grand somewhere around in there and that's not bad if you're getting into dual sporting because you're going to spend a little money for a decent bike you know but they're 250s and they've got just enough power and you can do light trails and they're great commuter bikes so you can just sit there and just zip around town uh put a tail rack on there do some like grocery shopping whatever you want to do that's pretty cool. And they're easy to handle. They're not overpowered. They don't have tons and tons of horsepower, you know, and, and you can just, you can manage those bikes. And they're light. I mean, anytime you're sitting under 350 pounds, you know, guess what? You can get it up by yourself. You can actually lift that bike if you lay it down. You can basically lift it up yourself. And even at 317 pounds, it's not that bad, guys. You can lift that bike up and you can get back on your way. Whereas if you are on the bigger bikes, the KLRs, the DRs, the, you know, the, 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 the bigger brothers, um, they're, they're getting heavy, man. You're getting up to the 370, 400 pounds. Now that's changing a little bit. Now if you're carrying gear on these bikes, you know, depending on what you're running, I like to use Giant Loop, you know, keep it light, keep it tight. I say doing it right. And then that way, whenever you're out 
if you're trying to do a small trip, and these bikes, as far as my, and I'm fixed to get to number one, guys, hold tight. Um, if you're trying to go and do like many adventures on these bikes, you want to keep the pack as light as possible, especially if you're planning on doing off-road. That way, it's easy to ride, it's easy to manage, and you can just basically, you can manage that bike. That's really what it's all about. It's all about managing the bike, because when you get freaked out, guess what? Everything goes downhill from there. So, But anyway, like I said, the CRF 250L from Honda, not too expensive, not too heavy, and a great, great bike for a new rider or even an intermediate rider or even an experienced rider for that fact. It's just a great, great, great bike. All right, getting on to the number one. And everybody's like going, oh yeah, we know what it is. It's the WR. No, it's not. It's a bike you probably would never think I was gonna talk about. The XT250 from Yamaha. Are you kidding me, man? 31 inch seat height? Dude, you can be 6'4 or 5'4. It makes no difference. Anybody can touch the ground on that bike. Literally, 4'9, you're probably tippy toeing. At 31 inch seat height, that's awesome. And the seat is actually pretty good from the factory. It's pretty good. Doesn't have tons of horsepower. It's an old style model. They haven't changed it a whole lot in all the years. But I'll tell you what, it's a pretty cool bike. I've been digging into that bike. And the more I read, the more I think it's pretty darn cool. So, 21 inch tire. You kidding me? 18 inch rear. You kidding me? On the XT of the Yamaha, go look it up. Check it out from Honda. It's fuel injected. Guess what? It's air cooled. Yeah, it's not water cooled. It's air cooled. So basically, as long as you're just pushing air through it, she's like a dirt bike, man. She's going to basically get you to point A to point B. And they haven't changed that style and that motor that much other than putting it in fuel injected in a five speed. So, with that being said, it, you know what, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The only thing they did, they fuel injected it, man. Why don't these other manufacturers fuel inject these other bikes? Uh, KLR650, for instance. All right, let's get back to the XT. XT250, 21 18 inch tire. It's got 11.2, 11.2 ground clearance. Are you kidding me? That's like, that's like 690 clearance on there. You know what I'm saying? Not tons of power, but guess what? It's got enough. How much do you need? There's people that basically travel thousands of miles on these bikes. They pack them up, they rat them down, and they romp on the road. They don't give a crap. And they do it. They do it, do it, do it. Okay? It's got two something gallons. I, I mean, they're, they're all between 2.2, 2.4, 2.6 gallons, all these bikes I'm talking about. But they're all in the 70 mile per gallon range. So that makes them really, really cool. Put a roto packs on the back, guess what? Bibbidi babbidi boo, ba bang, ba ba dang, you now almost hit 200 mile range. Really? Do the math on that. That's that. You can go freaking anywhere. Anywhere. So. But that XT, it's just really cool. Tons of aftermarkets if you want to with it. Um, it's great. I would definitely say that's an all around because of the seat height and basically the setup of it, that it just works for everybody. And I mean everybody. And guess what? The biggest kicker, 291, yeah, pounds. You can pick that thing up with one hand. I can tell you right now, because I can almost get my 690 up with one freaking hand at 308. Now it's dry, okay? But that bike is 291. So what a fantastic bike. These are my top three dual sports for new riders. I think you're going to totally score a win with any of them. And that XT definitely gets the number one spot. If you think I'm crazy, tell me why I'm crazy. Comment. Comment now. If you haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. Like I said, we're growing and every little bit counts. Hey, check out our t-shirt. We have t-shirts now. It's on there, just click it. And if you buy t-shirts, it's helping us out. It's helping the channel grow and it's allow us to do more and more things. Hey, guess what? Check it out. 690 News, August 5th. I mean, I'm sorry, August 5th. It's already happened. The reason you haven't seen any videos, guys, and you're like going, hey, he hasn't done anything. Well, there's a reason why I haven't done anything because there's no news. <laughs> but when we get the news, we're gonna bring it to you first. There's so much stuff that I get 
that everybody else has it three days later, I'm going to bring it to you before everybody else. But anyway, I appreciate your time. I know it's valuable. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day. 690 out.